welcome to my channel on the best of fantasy. Today I am reviewing Sons of Darkness by Grov Mohanty. This is the first in what will surely be an epic series, and this review will be spoiler free. Now I first heard about Sons of Darkness from Patrick Leo, who gave it an extremely enthusiastic review, and when Patrick talks, I listen. I was also thrilled to hear about what went into the making of this book. The author is very much inspired by the, the amazing epic, the Mahabharat, which is still central to many of the cultures of South Asia. It is, in my opinion, the greatest epic ever told. Also, I was involved in a discussion on Joanna's channel. That is a great, I think, way if you want to find out more about this book. Uh, we start out non-spoiler and then later get into the spoilers. So if you haven't read it and you just want to hear more about it in depth, then it's a great discussion to listen to. It includes Angie and Anita and the author himself, Gaurav Mohanty. And it was just a real pleasure to be part of that discussion. So those two videos, Patrick's review and Joanna's discussion, I highly recommend both of them and I will put links to them in the description below. Now, for my spoiler-free assessment of Sons of Darkness, I mentioned the foundation of this book is the Mahabharat, which is, as I said, one of the greatest, if not the greatest epic ever told. But the author has also reinterpreted the Mahabharat for the purpose of this modern fantasy series. He has taken it into a much more grim, dark direction. And that is a word that he himself has applied to his writing. Uh, so I think it's quite fair to use the word, and I believe that is, it is accurate. Uh, what you have here are some very familiar characters. If you have read the Mahabharat, if you are grounded in that epic, you will recognize the names of uh, almost the entire cast of characters here. But what Mahanti has done is he has taken these characters in a new direction. Though I will say, the seeds of where he takes these characters are already existent in the original epic. So, in other words, if he takes a character and pushes that character into a more Machiavellian direction, well, the character already had the traits of a Machiavellian character in the original. So what Mohanty has done is he's simply taken aspects of those characters and chosen to highlight them at this point in the story. And, and it is the case even in the original that even the heroes have flaws. So it's in a way a perfect... Uh, epic. It's a perfect story to adapt into a grim, dark type narrative because there are certainly flaws in every single one of the characters that have consequences in the in the sprawling epic that is the Mahabharat. Even the heroes, even the characters that we sympathize and root for, do some terrible things and often are racked in, in their consciences by those things that they do. So there's plenty. To, for uh, Mahanti to draw from there and take this in a more grim dark direction. And specifically, if we're talking about grim dark and modern fantasy, sources of inspiration for his writing, uh, A Song of Ice and Fire is very evident. He mentions it specifically in his acknowledgments, and he has uh, been very honest and open about the ways in which A Song of Ice and Fire has inspired him. And so he has given a little bit of a spin to the, you know, this is a, uh, a setting with lots of different kingdoms that are rivals with each other. There's a lot of political infighting and that sort of thing. Uh, so it does have a bit of the flavor of A Song of Ice and Fire in that respect. So if you like your politics, it's got politics. It's got backstabbing. It's got all of the consequent violence uh, that results from those activities. Uh, so A Song of Ice and Fire is certainly big in there, and he's, he's organized his kingdoms with mottos and that sort of thing that's very reminiscent of uh, the Seven Kingdoms in, in that very, I think, superficial way. Um, it's fair to say that the grounding, the foundation of this is really in the Mahabharat, but he has taken these little touches from these modern fantasies. Uh, those things have helped him to give it his own spin. 
Another uh, a very clear source of inspiration is certainly the First Law series by Joe Abercrombie. There is a particular character in the Sons of Darkness that is very reminiscent of Glockta, and I'm sure that most people who read uh, First Law will, will see that right away. Uh, and once again, I, I think Mohanty is very open and honest about the sources of inspiration. And it's interesting, though, because it, it's actually kind of fitting if you know the Mahabharat. It's kind of fitting that he's taken this particular character in this specific direction. So uh, you could almost call it a, a kind of archetype in that sense. And there's another scene from the Abercrombie book, Best Served Cold, that has a, a, a reinterpreted version in, in Sons of Darkness as well. Um, but I think Mahanti is very honest and open about these influences. Another one is the Malazan book, The Fallen, by Steven Erickson, which I personally do not consider grimdark, but it certainly has a lot of, a lot of suffering in it. And, uh, but it's also some very interesting portrayals of soldiers, and specifically the bridge burners, and later the bone hunters. And Mahanti has clearly taken some inspiration from that direction as well. Um, and he's, again, very open, very honest about it. Um, and as I say, the important thing to me is that he has used these modern fantasy influences to help him pull the story of the Mahabharata in certain thematic directions. What he wants to do very clearly in this book is to explore certain themes, and he does so by making this a modern grimdark fantasy. And so those themes include the caste system, and social hierarchy. This is something that he's most definitely exploring in here. The consequences on human beings of a social hierarchy that is very rigid and very punishing toward those who are deemed lesser. So there are certain characters that we sympathize with very deeply. Uh, by the way, also in the original Mahabharat as well. Um, he really takes that and he really runs with it in Sons of Darkness. Uh, I also think that uh, the prescribed roles of women in society and some defiance of them, that's something that he is most definitely exploring here in Sons of Darkness. Very importantly, very importantly, he is, he's deliberately taking on this theme, not in a way that seems heavy-handed at all, but it is definitely woven into the story. And again, this is something that I think, using, for example, Stephen Erickson's Malazan Book of the Fallen, where you have female soldiers... Uh, this is something that allows Mahanti to explore the prescribed gender roles of the society in, in a way that I think is very important. Well, there's uh, sacrifice for the sake of glory. What do you have to sacrifice for the sake of achieving glory? There's courage in here. There's revenge, ambition in a big, big way. And the consequences of ambition for the characters themselves who are ambitious, but also their loved ones, the people around them. How do their ambitions affect the people they love? And of course, as I said before, there's plenty of political intrigue. So all of that is packed into here. The setting, and unlike the character names, let's talk about the setting for a bit. The character names are very familiar for the most part. One or two I can think of that he alters, but mostly they're straight out of the, the original epic. But he alters the place names. So this is not Bharat. This is not ancient South Asia. Uh, but it is a, a, a fantasy world that reflects the richness and the beauty and the diversity of South Asia uh, in ancient times. Uh, with many rival kingdoms that are basically given ample space for politics and intrigue. This is a, a very rich setting, I would say. And in terms of those characters, familiarity with the Mahabharat is a good thing. It's an aid in getting the sort of resonance that comes from the Mahabharat that is carried over into Sons of Darkness, but it is not essential to have read the Mahabharat to be familiar with that great epic you will still get plenty uh, from these characters. You'll see uh, plenty of the themes that I just spoke about without any familiarity whatsoever with the ancient epic. But like in the Mahabharat, the characters are very much flawed and for the most part larger than life, but they are also humanized in a way that I think is pretty effective. Uh, this setup here in this, uh, this opening book, Sons of Darkness, uh, which is the opening to a series, shows a lot of promise. And I think there's some real potential for some long and captivating 
and compelling arcs in this series. I'm very interested to see where Mohanty takes some of the characters that he has uh, introduced us to here in book one. And the last thing I want to talk about, one of the things I'm actually the, the most enthusiastic about in Sons of Darkness is the magic. I really enjoyed Mohanty's take on uh, magic. He draws from South Asian spiritual tradition in a way that blends beautifully with the story. Uh, so I really like that a lot. And you'll see uh, if you know anything at all about uh, yoga or South Asian spirituality that uh, he's done something pretty clever here with his, uh, his magic. And I'm really interested to see where he takes the magic in future books uh, because I think we've just gotten some big hints about it um, up to this point. So it'll be inter interesting to see where he goes. And I like the fact that he preserves this as magic per se. There's no attempt to explain it as uh, pseudoscience or anything like that. It's just magic and it works and it's cool. And it, you know he kind of goes for it with the magic, which I think is awesome. So that is my non-spoiler assessment of Sons of Darkness. I will be reading the next book in this series when it comes out and look forward to checking it out. That's it for me for now. Until next time.